uh, at the uh, uh, conference in Santa Barbara two weeks ago, uh, there was an estimate of somewhere between uh, 130 and 338,000 patients in California, only about 25% of whom actually have safe access to medical cannabis at this time. And so that huge increase in the number of patients is driving the proliferation of dispensaries in areas where previously uh, the, uh, the communities were not so supportive. There's also uh, other factors that I think are relevant to the capacity of the dispensaries to serve uh, their patients. And one, I think, is a, uh, a dissatisfaction, and I don't necessarily mean that in uh, the harshest sense of the word, but a dissatisfaction amongst the patients with what they have. Uh, there are some dispensaries, uh, some patients who are dissatisfied with the services and with the uh, uh, medicine that they can find at the dispensaries, and that will often lead them to strike out on their own. And one of the exciting trends we're seeing right now is that individual patients, previously people receiving services, are getting educated, they're getting motivated, and opening their own dispensaries. And that is exactly a wonderful step forward. Uh, I actually talk to at least three or four people every week who want to do that. And uh, we've come now to the point where uh, some of those people have actually opened up and are operating, and now they are helping to train new dispensary operators from their patient base to open new dispensaries. And that is grassroots organizing in its, in its purest form, I think, is uh, people just going out and taking the initiative and doing it. Of course, also driving that proliferation of dispensaries is uh, financial opportunity. Uh, and that's both real financial opportunity and perceived financial opportunity. Uh, there's a common misconception that anyone who opens up their doors as a dispensary will, of course, be a millionaire by the next week. And uh, that is not the case. And yet, uh, there is a uh, medical cannabis is a growth industry in California right now. There are people making a lot of money at it. And uh, that perception of financial opportunity, I think, is also driving uh, the new dispensaries to open, and especially in these areas where traditionally they've been less welcome. So the good news about this proliferation of dispensaries is that having new dispensaries open, over 200 and growing here in California, remember those only only the 219 that we know about. There are plenty more that we don't know about yet. This uh, means that we're taking medical cannabis and Proposition 215 and making it a reality every single day in the lives of tens of thousands of patients. That's no small thing. Uh, California's medical cannabis law is not theoretical or hypothetical. It's real every day of the patient's lives. And that's something to be proud of and it's something to strive for in the other states. I know we're seeing inklings of that all up and down the West Coast, in Colorado, and even on the East Coast now. And I, I think it's a trend we should encourage and support because those uh, new dispensaries in the other states are going to uh, bring that same safe access and that same reality to those patients and they're going to take the heat off California, and we could really use that. <laughs> now, the bad news about this proliferation of dispensaries is that as the number of dispensaries grows, the challenges facing the local communities, the city councils and the boards of supervisors, are also going to grow. And with the proliferation of dispensaries comes a proliferation of non-compliant and uh, perhaps less desirable dispensaries as well. Sometimes this is the result of ignorance about how best to operate, and sometimes just carelessness. But local cities and counties are now dealing with the issue uh, of how to regulate their dispensing collectives and cooperatives. And they're not going to get any leadership from Sacramento on this issue. And so city by city and county by county, we're going to have to sort that out uh, in a way that's relevant for those communities, that respects the values of those communities, and hopefully in a way that actually protects the patients as well as the neighborhoods in dealing with medical cannabis. The problem with dispensaries uh, that are raising concerns and, and, and generating controversy in that community isn't just for the immediate neighbors. Uh, the uh, perception that dispensaries are problematic and that they bring uh, criminal activity and nuisance behavior into neighborhoods jeopardizes uh, the credibility of our medical cannabis movement here in California. And it's very, very important for these dispensaries to be good neighbors and good citizens in their communities so that we can facilitate this growth and safe act us. Uh, the concern that local governments have when I talk to them, the city councils and the boards of supervisors, are not about the big issues. They're not concerned about the Supreme Court case. They're curious, but they're not really hung up on it. They're not concerned about federal law and uh, the larger issues of ethics or morals around self-medication. Uh, they're worried about smoking outside. They're worried about litter and graffiti and parking and the other kind of nuisance activities that cause their constituents to call and complain about medical cannabis dispensaries. And what we need to focus on in regulation, I think, is the nuts and bolts operation that is going to make these dispensaries good neighbors and be sure to protect that safe access. 
there are two aspects, and of course I could go on all day, I'm just going to focus on two aspects of uh, medical cannabis dispensing collectives that I think would go a long way to shoring up that credibility and preventing that kind of nuisance behavior that leads to complaints and to problems in communities. One is the organization of the dispensaries themselves, their sort of legal or structural organization, and the other is what I call the good neighbor policy. Under our state law, there's no explicit protection for a medical cannabis dispensary. It uh, was not anticipated under Proposition 215, or at least it wasn't addressed under Proposition 215, and it's uh, absent from SB 420 explicitly. However, SB 420 does make a space for collectives and cooperatives of patients, and it's a small step to the dispensing collective, where a group of patients and caregivers join together to produce medical cannabis, to package it, to label it, and to provide it back. And in that model, uh, patients would provide to that dispensing collective their excess medication, which would then be provided to the other members who cannot or will not grow their own medicine. And that model that is membership-based and exclusively uh, supplied by patients and caregivers who are members, I think is one that makes local government and neighbors very comfortable. They don't like the idea of Walmarts of cannabis. Uh, they're uncomfortable with that, but the idea of a uh, group of patients working together as a closed circuit, isolated from the illicit market, seems to satisfy the mandates of uh, SB 420 and allay the concerns of consumers. Uh, you'll find on the uh, front, yes, on the front uh, chairs here, I've put out some information. One of the things we've been working hard to do is define what a dispensing collective is uh, under SB 420, and this is a work in progress. The information you'll find on this page about medical cannabis dispensing collectives was adapted from a return of property in motion filed in a uh, case with a uh, LA dispensary that was shut down and the attorneys set out to identify what a collective or cooperative was in terms of state law. This very wordy and not terribly elegant ad adaptation of that uh, return of property motion talks about a collective in which this is made up entirely of patients and caregivers that's membership based with a closed membership just to their registered members where all the supply is internal. And that, I believe, is the sort of legal organization that's going to lead us forward and allay those concerns, at least until the time that there can be some meaningful regulation from the state government or a significant change in federal government. I hope you'll have a look at that. It's not a finished uh, document. It's a work in progress. And so any feedback that you guys can provide on that, uh, I am very eager to have. You'll find contact information at the bottom. Uh, besides being legitimately organized, though, I think we have a, a behavioral issue that's perhaps even more significant with dispensing collectives and cooperatives. And that is what we talk about as our good neighbor policy. You're going to find down at the front as well a very short booklet called Medical Cannabis in Our Community. This booklet was developed to talk to neighbors about dispensaries because uh, we were finding that the same questions come up again and again. What is a dispensary? Who are the patients? Are they safe and are they legal? And that's what this uh, booklet deals with. It's a layman's discussion, and it is really only the starting point of a conversation, uh, not, uh, not an uh, authoritative treatise. Only providing medicine to their members, and that they are not allowing, through lack of oversight, members to divert medicine into the illicit market. Uh, whether or not, and, you know, I personally wish there were no illicit market. If cannabis could just be legal, then of course that wouldn't be an issue. But until it is, uh, we have to have a line, I think, uh, over which dispensaries do not cross. In addition to maintaining that legal integrity, being a good neighbor has to do with providing the adequate security that your community requires. And what that requires will vary from neighborhood to neighborhood. But I think at a minimum in this day and age, that adequate security would involve professional security guards and appropriate physical uh, security measures to protect the patients, protect the community, and to protect the medication. Uh, being a good neighbor has to do with pre preventing the nuisance activity. You don't necessarily want loitering. You definitely don't want diversion of medication in the cars and on the street corners, which we've seen in some locations where the concentrations of cannabis clubs. Uh, that good neighbor policy has to do with keeping that neighborhood safe and good repair, clean. Uh, some of the dispensaries operate, we actually have neighborhood cleanup days where we go up and down and sweep the sidewalk and make sure the litter is picked up. Uh, so that we can demonstrate to the community that we're committed to their well-being as well. Uh, the good neighbor policy has to do with educating members because the patients are going to be in many ways ambassadors to the community and they need to know about the law, they need to know about their rights, and they need to know about how to represent their dispensary in the community. Uh, very early in my experience in Berkeley, uh, we had an incident that turned up in a police report that uh, was amusing. 